So um, I initially I had done, I think I recorded it, but I'm not 100% sure, a recording of the initial drawing. And so like a big part of this, uh, because we are, you know, moving into landscapes now, kind of a different subject matter. And landscapes, there's a lot to say about them. Um, my approach is, it's kind of a culmination of a lot of different things. And it's based on like my sort of experience and boiling it down in sort of a digestible way. And it's, it's really just my approach. And the biggest thing, if I were to talk about landscape painting, it, it's, it's really a good idea to paint on location as much as you can which means actually going outside. And I would recommend like very simple scenes. It doesn't have to be anything complex, but just with the goal of trying to capture something with the vitality of, of nature as you actually observe it. And what that to me meant was that the paintings had some life in them. Like they actually looked like they were observations from outside. And that's always what I wanted to, to capture because those were always my favorite paintings, landscape paintings, were those that that feel like you're actually at the place at the time of day, you know, kind of like looking over the shoulder of the artist as they put it down. And they do feel like you're outdoors. Because in my mind, it's it's really like, why bother if you can't really do that? Um, I mean, why bother ultimately? Obviously, the bother is in the the painting of it and experiencing that, but like if it doesn't have that sort of life, if it doesn't capture that life, then for me, it, it doesn't really ring true. And it's not in my mind, it's not a success. So all that to say, painting from observation out in the field on plain air, however you want to call it, like that is the biggest, um, I would say the biggest step in understanding how to paint landscapes. And, you know, I, I for myself, that was always the goal that my favorite painters painted from life and they painted on location. And I knew that, you know, I was terrible at it at first and I just knew that I had to get through it and I had to basically paint miles and miles of canvas in order to understand it. So I just, you know, said about that. So I just did a bunch of small studies one summer and got a little bit better. And then, you know, from there you, you slowly improve, but, um, getting out outdoors, painting, and then also reading up. And I would recommend just a few books. I wouldn't do too much overstudying, but a couple of the, the books that I would recommend, and they're pretty much classics, but Edgar Payne's Composition of Outdoor Painting. That's a big one. You, you have it, Kat? Yeah, I read it. I feel like he was roasting me the entire time. <laughs> he was like, what? He, he just listed everything not to do. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I do all of those things. Right. Exactly. Yeah. But he's really good as far as like, there's some really great things at the back of the book with design. And I would like, I remember I copied those two or three times and then I would do the color studies too. So like his little mini on location and I would do the color schemes of those just to kind of figure out how he, how he makes colors and how he plays colors. But like the composition, the little design layouts that he does, those are extremely helpful because you can actually find those in nature and your brain kind of automatically composes in that way. So I would, I'd recommend those. Um, another one is John Carlson's, I think it's Carlson's Guide to Landscape Painting. That's another one that I really recommend. That's got some great insights. Um, the other one is... Um, I've mentioned it in one of my other sessions is Hawthorne's Notes on Painting. And that's by Charles Hawthorne. He's uh, from back east in, I believe it's Massachusetts or Maine, somewhere, New England. And uh, he has some really good notions on, on uh, painting outdoors. And then finally, the other one that was pivotal was Kevin McPherson's. I think it's called Fill, Filling Your Paintings with Light and Color. Is that what it's called, his first one? Does that sound familiar? Um, I think so, yeah. That one was really good. And he, he actually spells out exercises and 
things that you can do, projects that you can do to really enhance your your abilities. And so those were basically instrumental in my development. Um, so I should probably talk about what I'm actually doing here, which is I'm just using my four Copic markers, just like I did with the fire studies. And I'm keeping, you know, the white was, which is my white. And then I have a light gray, a medium gray, a dark gray, and then a darkest gray, which isn't quite black. So at this point, I'm just kind of going through and I'm mapping out where my values are, starting with the sky. And I tried to be cognizant of how the values would remain, as well as the order that I was going to do this in. So I pretty much the order that I do the, the marker study the value study is also the one that I do in the stage one painting, which is the next one. And then ultimately the final painting, the stage two and three completed painting. So I go through the same process, essentially. There is some deviation, but it's it's essentially the same. Um, and so I'm just gradually going from light to dark. And the only white area that I preserve on here is just the, the sunset itself. Um, this photograph was vastly different from actually being there and taking it. And that was another key sort of point I wanted to make, which was photography can either be uh, very helpful or it can be pretty deceiving. And so by having sort of that, that understanding of that fundamental understanding of landscape painting to begin with, you can actually look at a photograph and make the adjustments to make it feel a little bit more believable in terms of reality versus a photograph. And so, you know, being able to identify some of the things that aren't working in the photograph that might work better in the painting and, and making those adjustments is a really important thing to do if you're going to be working from a photograph. Otherwise, your photo, your paintings are gonna look like photographs, which is kind of like a cliche thing, but it's it's absolutely true. And so with the markers, I'm really just working from back to front. Um, this one here, you know, now I'm working in that middle ground, which is kind of the that main grouping of trees. And you'll see, you know, all the way from my initial pencil drawing to the finished one, it's pretty different from the photo reference as far as the layout and the design of some of the bushes and trees and things. But I found in the photograph, the sort of the row of trees was all on one plane, which was not interesting to me because I really wanted to convey depth with this. I really try to show space whenever I can, because that's, you know, one of the things that, that I'm drawn to with the subjects that I paint in landscape. I really like to show that atmospheric perspective and, you know, that change in color in the air. And so for that reason, I had to put a little bit more layering and some size difference with the, the groupings of trees. And you'll see like this one here that I'm doing right now, that's actually not there in the photo. So I kind of move it up. I took some, some liberties there to do that. Also the foreground from the photo, you can see it's kind of like this gravel road with sort of this hill on either side. I felt like that was a little too fussy for the photo because I really didn't want it to be about anything in the foreground. I didn't want any foreground elements kind of distracting from that distance. And so I just eliminated that and simplified it with a more foreground gradual sloping hill. And that's really another huge thing is to edit and, you know, being mindful of removing all the unnecessary things right and if they're not really strengthening the composition don't feel like you have to keep them in because you observe them like it's really being confident in where you're trying to go with your design and tossing out what's not working or if it's working against you and basically boiling it down to the basics and that's something i learned very quickly painting on location was you can't capture everything and if you try to, then it just doesn't work. So you have to be very selective about what you choose to in include. And uh, you'll kind of learn what those, what those um, integral parts are in order to have a 
a decent looking landscape study or landscape painting. So at this Did you point, say art when you're doing an an on location like plein air painting, you also do these value studies as well? No, I, I actually don't. Okay. Uh, but this was uh, I, I just don't I just jump right in. I'm just a very much a direct painter, so I just kind of jump in. But these are helpful, and this I'm just kind of going over my composition process and how I break down values in terms of how I see before actually getting into mixing the color. Because I am trying to see this and observe it in terms of, you know, the value breakdown. But, I mean, th that would be a good idea is to just do a bunch of value studies in nature. I never, I just jumped right in full color. And I haven't really looked back. Um, and then, Lynn, you came in just a little bit late, but initially we talked about how we're going to be like a little bit more open with this. So if you have any questions or if you want, if either of you have any areas that you'd like me to discuss or go over, if you have particular questions, I'm happy to answer those or orient my comments to that. Awesome. Thanks. Um, sure. I missed um, Edgar Payne's book. What was the book you had said? Called Composition of Outdoor Painting. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Sorry, I'm um, doing parent teacher interviews tonight, so I was late and I'm going to have to leave because I have a gap right now. <laughs> so okay. I can come for a little bit. <laughs> well, I appreciate you squeezing us in. Yeah, thanks. Are you the teacher or are you the parent? You're muted. I didn't catch that. Sorry, I'm the teacher. <laughs> oh, okay. You're a teacher too. All right. Yeah. Nice. So I feel your pain and you feel my pain. <laughs> um, okay. So anyway, the, the thing about landscape painting is uh, it's really just kind of developing a shorthand for yourself because you're not capturing every single little detail, but you do have to approximate things. And um, you need to develop sort of a language to do that, that makes sense to you and, as well as the viewer. And so because you can't say everything, you have to limit what you say, but you have to make sure it's impactful and it's saying all the essential things. Um, because there is, you know, so much visual information, you really do have to develop a way to communicate those essentials, whatever that is. And, you know, there's so many different styles and techniques that people use to do that. You just have to find out that that balance that works for you. And I was I was always drawn to, you know, Sergey Bongart was a huge influence because he actually was from the area. I was up in Rexburg, Idaho, which is eastern Idaho, and he lived there. And then another Russian artist named Ivanis Barbarian was living there when I was studying, and he was a big influence. Um, and so I, I always kind of leaned towards a more like Russian painterly, almost expressionistic style, um, but it was very much anchored in realism. And so I still kind of feel kind of oriented in that direction. I really do like things looking painterly. And so I do kind of strive for that um, stylistically, but that they are very much into that approximation and that shorthand in order to convey their subject. So I'm get, kind of getting closer here. Um, I don't really want anything to stand out outside of its sort of value grouping. So if there's an area that's too light in a dark area, then I'll knock it down a little bit. Or an area that's too dark in a light area. I mean, with markers, if you go too dark, then you're kind of past the point of no return. So you have to ease into it. 